Hello everyone and welcome to this third introductory video for Autodesk 3ds Max. Today we're going to be creating and editing splines and shapes. To create splines and shapes you just need to go over to the shapes option under the create panel and we'll have splines. Most of the splines we're going to be working with are under just regular splines. So starting with just line we can click to create multiple points. If we click and drag we'll start to create bezier corners and corners. Then I'll keep clicking and then close the spline. And I just closed the spline by clicking on where I started the spline. If I go to my modify, we have a line. And again, just like with edit poly, we have vertex mode, segment, and spline mode. And these are controlled with the hotkeys one, two, three on your keyboard. With vertex mode selected, we can select any of these points and move them around. If we hit delete, it will get rid of them and then connect the point before and after to each other. If we right click on a point, we'll be able to see what type it is. This one, for instance, is a bezier, which we have these graph handles, which will allow us to manipulate its curves in and out. We can change this one to a bezier corner, which will give us those same options, but they're independent of each other. So we can have a harsh curve in and a harsh curve out. If we select this one and set it to smooth, we don't get any options, but it's going to smooth the line in and smooth the line out automatically. So if I were to select all of these guys and then just change them to smooth, we have a nice smooth line. And if I change them back to just corner, they'll become harsh again. If I set this one to Bezier, and if I mess with these a whole bunch, I can right click on it, hit reset tangents, and it will reset them to the default state. If we've decided that we want to add more to our line, we can do this by just using create line. And for this, I'm going to turn my snaps on and make sure they're set to vertex mode. So I'll hit create line. And now I'm snapping to my vertexes on the line. So I can just click here, create a few more points, and then click over here. And now I'll get out of create line mode by just right clicking. And now I'll go to segment. I'll select this segment here and just delete it. And now you'll notice that when I move this new line here, it's detached. Same for over here, because this is its own segment. If we want to join it to the rest of the spline, it needs to be welded. There's two ways we can do this. We can either use the selection of these vertices and then hit welding within this threshold, or we can just turn on automatic welding. So if we click this, and we'll just turn that threshold down to like two. Now with automatic welding on, if we grab this segment and then move this guy to match up, it should automatically weld them together. Now if I try to move this segment, they're attached. And we'll have to do the same over here. After you turn automatic welding on, you need to move them and bring them back to each other. But instead of that, I can just select these guys, hit weld. And now if I select this segment, they're attached. If we'd like to add vertices along any point on the line, we can do that by just using the refine button. We can just click, click, click to add points. And if we don't like them, we can just select them and hit delete. A few other line objects that we can use are circle. Circle is just kind of like a primitive prefab for lines. When we look at it, we can apply the edit spline modifier on top or right click and hit convert to editable spline. And then we get those same controls as before. So we can modify any of its segments. We can refine them to add more points. So you can use those as a starting point. So if you want to just have a circle, and then modify it, you can create a circle shape and then add edit spline on top of it. Another option is rectangle, arc, which is just going to be between two points and then it'll arc out. Ellipse, which is just a, a, a non-uniform circle. Donut, which will be a circle with inside each other. Engon will be a sided shape that we define. So if we say like 11 sides, we have 11 sides. If we say you know, 16 sides, it'll just keep going up. Um, and we can affect the corner radius as well. So if we turn that down and we start messing with the corner radius, we see that we get a smooth effect. So this is a smooth triangle out of a N-gun. 
the star effect, we have points, and then we can turn those points up. Click and drag to create the size and then the points. The text spline will create any text that we type in. So we can type that in right there and hit hello. And you know, we can change the font. So you can get easy text out of this. Helix, which is a, it's going to be a 3D spline. So all of these are essentially two dimensions on just X, Y. So with Helix, if we click and drag, we get what looks to be a circle. But as soon as we let go, we move our mouse up and the spline is increasing on the Z axis. And then as we click, we'll start to get another turning amount. And then we can go to the helix under modify and we can turn the amount of turns up so it gets windy like a spring. So the cool thing about splines is that they can all be rendered. So take for instance, this helix. If we select this helix and we expand rendering, we can hit enable in viewport. And this will create 3D geometry out of our 2D spline. So we can use radial, which is going to be a tube, and we can increase this, and now we have an easy spring. And we can turn the sides up or down, and then the angle will twist it, but that's more noticeable on the rectangle. So radial will be a circle, and rectangle is going to make it be a rectangle. So we can make it a box by setting both the length and width to six. And then as we turn the angle up, you can see that it's changing the angle of the rectangle along that spline. And then we can add edit poly on top of it, and we can start to play with this geometry like it was created with any other prefab. So it's very easy to create objects just from splines and then start editing them. Going back to our end gun here, we can see that we have some pretty rounded corners here, but when we zoom in, they get a little harsh. This is determined by the interpolation value, and right now we have six steps. So if I turn the steps down, you'll see that it gets harsher, and as I turn the steps up, it gets more high quality. So it's easier seen if we turn rendering on. So this is with 12 steps. And this is with six. So with this rectangle over here, if I apply edit all spline, I go into vertex mode. I can refine this here to add two more and then two more again, and then kind of pull this guy out. And then I can use snaps to kind of align these guys to each other. And I'll set these all to just be corner. So now I have this kind of T-shaped Tetris block. I can select these two corners here, and then if I click fill it, I can drag to start performing the fill it option, which will round these corners, or I can just move this slider up, which will also do the same thing. So I'm getting this rounded effect, and it's ended up creating an extra vert. We can perform chamfer as well, which will do kind of the same thing as fill it, except it's going to be a harsh kind of corner between the two. If for some reason I'd like to open this spline up, I can select this vertice here and click break. It doesn't look like anything's happened, but what it's done is it's broken these vertices apart and there's two of them here. So if I just grab one of them and move it out of the way, we have one more. So now if I wanted to, I can just adjust that. With automatic welding on, I can just hit create line, create that new shape and close the spline up. And all I have to do is fix these. I'll just set them to corner and I have a new shape. Shapes are very useful and we can perform some simple Boolean operations between shapes. So if I create a circle here, we can use this circle to interact with this object here. If I position the circle like this, we can cut this circle out from this shape or cut this shape out from the circle and do all sorts of other things. For this to work though, they need to be one object. So under editable spline, I'll click attach and attach my circle. And now with spline mode selected, I can click on this circle here. And we have our three options. We have union, subtraction, and intersection. So with union selected, it's going to merge them together. So I'll click Boolean, select the other object, and it's cut out the spots where they would overlap. So now I have a circle added onto the corner there. 
using the subtraction boolean operation the order matters so i have the circle created here and i'll boolean off with subtraction my other shape and you'll see that it cut that corner out of my circle but if i select my other rectangle shape and then boolean subtraction the circle it'll cut the circle out the last boolean operation is intersection and the order does not matter all it's going to do is keep the intersection of the two so it's kind of the opposite of union another useful tool for editing splines is the mirror operation and we have horizontal vertically in both so if i just click mirror it's going to flip the object horizontally let me adjust this so you can see it a bit better so we're mirroring horizontally if i turn copy on it'll create a copy now it's not very useful right now if i go to my hierarchy tab and affect the pivot and i reset the pivot to the origin of the world i can do that by just right clicking here to zero these values out now when i select this guy choose about pivot and mirror it will create the mirror on the other side so this is based on where my pivot is and if i just turn copy off select these guys and change it to vertical we'll get a vertical mirror outline is another pretty cool option it will just outline kind of like what donut does but it's for any shape we give it so if i were to create kind of a arc line and then went into spline mode and outlined it it's going to create the other line and connect the two and if i outline it again it will give me a outline that's already connected so with this shape we can do a couple cool things with modifiers one very useful modifier is called lathe so if i rotate this guy so he's standing up and i'm going to use angle snaps for this the hotkey is a just so i can get it along the z-axis here and i'm also going to zero it out in my world i'll bring it up a little bit to the right if I put a lathe modifier on it, we see that we're getting this weird kind of shape. So to fix that, we can move the axis. Just if we expand lathe, we can move it around. And if you'd like to not have to move the axis, we can delete lathe, affect the pivot only again, and then we'll put it to the world. And now when we reapply lathe, it will use that pivot point. So now we have kind of a bowl shape. We can refine it by adding more segments. And you'll notice right in the middle, there's a little hole. This is because the line doesn't actually touch the center. So if I grab my vertices here and align that guy to the center and that guy to the center, now when we go to lathe, there's no hole there. There are some smoothing issues, but this can be fixed if we just turn weld core on. Now we have a pretty decent bowl. If the bowl is too rigid, we can always go back down to our line. And I'll turn show end results on here. So we can see our line shape right here. I can select these vertices. And if I just change them to smooth, the bowl instantly becomes smooth. And if I select this vertice here and just start to fill it, we get a rounded effect, and this all happens in real time on the 3D mesh because we have show end result on. And I can chamfer this guy. Another very useful modifier if you're working on industrial objects or a lot of games seem to like I-beams. So if I create this shape here, I can add a edit spline. I can chamfer these edges here. And then I can apply the sweep modifier. So what sweep will do is it's going to follow the spline and draw a built-in shape around it. Now we can use a built-in shape or a custom shape. For now, we'll just use the built-in. So right now we just have an angle piece and we get a few options per angles. So we have our length and our width and the thickness. And then we can adjust the radius to get it smoother or less smooth. And we can turn this into a T-beam or a wide flange, also known as an I-beam. And this, this is a very easy way to get I-beams uh, into various video games or just whatever you're working on. 
Another option to get shapes following a spline is I can draw this shape here. Which is just kind of a nice little curve. I'll actually set these guys to be smooth. And now I can create another shape. Let's say the star. Or actually, we'll use a three sided end gun. And I will give it some corner radius. So now, under the geometry section, I want to go from standard primitives to compound objects. And for this, we can use loft. So with this object selected, we'll click loft. And now we want to choose get shape. So if we click get shape and then click on the triangle, it's now going to move this shape along the path and create geometry out of it. And then we can go to the modify tab and we have some more options. So we have our shape options here and we should be able to modify it. So it's moved the shape to the beginning vert on the spline. So it's not over here and this shape isn't it anymore. So if we select this right here, we can rotate it and scale it. And since it's using an instance, if we go back to our shape end gun and we add more sides, it will automatically update this object here. If we click on path, we'll see that line becomes available. And here's where we can go back and edit our line. It's a little hard to see because of the geometry on top of it, but we can always start moving it around and refine this shape to do whatever we want. And of course, we can always refine it, add more vertices, and then move those around as well. So to get the same effect with sweep, we can choose use custom shape and then make sure instance is selected and then click on our end gun over there. And now if we select our end gun, we can change the sides and we'll notice that they both update. Loft gives you an option of scale, twist, teeter, and a couple other settings. So if I use scale, we'll get this graph here and I can shrink this down and then make the other side larger. So we kind of get like this little horn type shape. We can also get twist out of it. Again, we have the same graph. So if I turn twist up there, we start to get a twisting shape. And this would actually look kind of cooler if we used a, a star. So if we grabbed a seven point star, then if we went to loft and hit get shape, we can see that we have this kind of twisting effect on our lofted object. If we don't want to use loft and we want the same star shape, we can just apply an extrude modifier which will create a face here and we can start to extrude upwards. And then if we add an edit poly on top of it, we're able to start messing with the geometry. So we can add some loops, kind of scale this guy inwards. And that's all from the star shape. And that's going to wrap up this introductory video on splines. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to support me on Patreon if you can. Thanks and have a good one.